Hi everybody, Rosie here. Today we're back at Shaker Village. This beautiful spot is about 15 minutes away from my home and I've been coming here since I was a toddler. I really love it. So the Shakers were a religious group of people who were known for their woodworking and furniture, music, dancing, inventions, and agriculture. They believed in confession, purity, obedience, pacifism, pacifism and communitarianism. Today, there are two Shakers left in Sabbath Day Lake, Maine, and the remaining Shaker communities have been turned into landmarks. So today, I wanna to tell you about Shakers and the Civil War and their quest for peace. So the Shakers believed in nonviolence, and during the Civil War, they looked for ways to find exemptions from military service. Before the federal draft was established in 1863, if people didn't wanna fight in war, they simply wouldn't volunteer. After the federal draft though, resisting fighting came with very serious consequences. Men had four options during war. One, they could fight in the military. Two, they could purchase a substitute. Three, they could pay a hefty $300 fee worth over $7,500 today. Or four, they could be prosecuted as a draft dodger, which usually resulted in being shot and hung. The Shakers obviously didn't feel okay with any of these options, so they traveled to the White House and visited Lincoln. Frederick Evans and Benjamin Gates, two leaders in the Shaker community, were sent to visit Lincoln. Once they got there, they pointed out that many veterans of the American Revolution had converted to Shakerism after the war. These men never accepted their pensions, and if they demanded payment, it would be over a million dollars that's worth over 30 million in today's money. They also explained their deeply held views on nonviolence and why they believed in its transformative power. Lincoln exempt them from fighting, so they sent him one of their beautifully made chairs and he sent them a thank you note. They also invited him for a vacation in New Lebanon, one of their communities. Some historians say that Lincoln developed a deep respect for the Shakers and met with one of their leaders to pray. She sent him a letter afterwards, and people say that that letter was in his pocket when he died. So what is one of the messages that we can learn from the Shakers? Well, one thing that I take from this story is that we need to be brave, and that we need to make nonviolence an integral part of our lives. The Shakers simply couldn't fight in war. They held nonviolence as a part of their lives, as a part of their religion, and in it, there was no place for violence. In the world that they worked for and envisioned, there was just no place for war. We can learn so many amazing things from them. Furthermore, please be aware that for most young men in the United States, it is mandatory to register for the selective service in case of an emergency draft. Punishment for not registering is a fine of up to $250,000 or five years in prison. However, in the experiences that I've had of military offers coming to my high school and college, the option of conscientious objection is not readily presented. If you know young men between the ages of 18 and 25, please tell them about conscientious objection. They can see more materials about it in the link below in the description of this video. So thank you all so much for watching and for coming to tour Shaker Town with me. If you liked this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Click the bell icon to get notified of when we come out with our next video. Also check out our website and our campaign on violence week of action coming up in September. Check out our social media too. Thanks for watching. Peace out.